Hello class and welcome back to another lesson. So this lesson is, I believe that it will help out a lot of people because a lot of people struggle with this particular issue, which is how to grab your audience's attention and maintain it. Because I'm pretty sure for a lot of inexperienced speakers or presenters, one of the things that they dread the most is while they're giving their presentation, they look into the audience and they see a sea of disinterested faces. You know, maybe there are some people just on their phone. Maybe their boss is just giving them kind of like a what in the world are you doing type of look or the things along those lines. So simple techniques that I, I think anyone can really just pick up right now, right? Some might take a little bit more practice time than others, but nonetheless, here are some delivery techniques to grab and maintain your audience's attention. Okay, let's just dive into it. So number one, this, well, number one, which is project your voice. This is one of the biggest recurring problems that I see with a lot of speakers or individuals who are giving presentations. Now, a lot of speakers, they tend to be soft-spoken, which is fine for your everyday conversation, but think about a presentation. The point of a presentation is for you to deliver material for the audience to hear and listen and digest and then possibly give you feedback afterwards. Now, if the audience can't hear you, can't hear the content that you're trying to deliver, then that's extremely problematic and that probably defeats the purpose of a presentation. Now, to simply grab your audience's attention it's as easy as projecting your voice so the audience members can actually hear you and understand you. Now, this is what I noticed. What makes a major difference between average speakers and great speakers? Your average speaker is it polished. It, they can be polished. But great speakers, they have this energy. They exude this energy. They grab your attention immediately from the first word. Now, how do they grab your attention from the first word? They make sure you can hear that word. Now, this delivery technique will more or less 99% of the time always work to get your points across or to get your audience's attention is you speak loud enough with a lot of vibrancy and energy in your tone of voice to really captivate your audience's attention. It's kind of here it's kind of like hearing just you know like a loud sound that comes out of nowhere your your attention just kind of focuses on that right when you hear a cop siren or some loud music playing all of a sudden your attention goes to that the same thing can be said when it comes to your presentation literally the first word that comes out of your mouth it needs to be loud enough so the entire audience can hear and it should be loud enough where it fills the entire room now, here's the major difference. When I say project your voice, I don't mean scream. Screaming is a whole, that's something you should avoid. When you scream, think about when you hear someone scream. Obviously, as a human, like our human instinct is going to tell us, oh no, there's something wrong. So if you scream, we're going to assume that there's something wrong. Are you okay? Should we call the doctor for you? Now, that's one thing you want to avoid. But projecting your voice is different. Projecting your voice means that you speak from your diaphragm. Learning to project your voice, you should be speaking from your diaphragm. Now, a simple tip is when you're just saying your speech or you're just having conversation, feel the vibration of from your body when you're speaking. Is it coming from your throat slash chest area? If that's the case, you're not really speaking from your diaphragm. You're speaking from your diaphragm, it should come from there should be a vibration around your belly area. So the number one tip or the first tip is project your voice. It always works. It always grabs attentions, especially when it comes to presentations. It's because just that simply that loud and that loud sound will gather people's attention just kind of like, I mean, this is not the best comparison, but like a car crash, right? Or just a loud song or loud something that just gets your attention quickly. So number one tip is project your voice. And this can be a struggle for 
you know, soft-spoken individuals. Now, I'm not saying you have to be super, super duper loud to the point of screaming. Project your voice enough so just the entire audience can hear it, right? So understand your range when it comes to projecting your voice. But at the very least, you should be speaking from your diaphragm so people can hear you. Even when it comes to live Zoom calls, one thing a lot of people mistake is that they think they're speaking too loud when in reality, it's just perfect. That's my rule of thumb. One thing that I've learned just from giving presentations you know, and lectures and workshops and things along those lines is usually when I'm speaking to, to a live audience or in person, I know that I'm projecting well enough when in my own ear, it almost sounds like I'm kind of yelling. Not screaming, right? But yelling, or I'm I'm la I'm pretty loud to myself, and I know that's a good indicator because if I feel loud or I feel like I sound loud, that's probably a good enough volume to reach the person that's furthest away from me in the room, and that's most important. You want to make sure that your presentation and your delivery and your volume is loud enough so the furthest person in the room from you can hear you, right? You want everyone to be included in your presentation. Okay. Moving forward, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Moving forward, this is the second delivery technique. Number two is stand with confidence. Now, I can speak for most public speaking coaches or just people who have seen presentations often is we know whether or not an individual do, will do a great job just based off how they stand. And I'm pretty sure you listeners can tell the difference as well. Right? You can tell when someone stands with confidence and when someone feels just extremely nervous or has a lot of anxiety. Right, Usually someone who's nervous, they might have their shoulders kind of rolled forward. They might be kind of crawling up in a ball a little bit. Right, They're, they're, they're not just standing with their chest open, arms to their side, their legs just nice and straight, feet close together. Number two is stand with confidence. Exude the fact that you are there, you believe in what you have to say, you might not be 100% prepared, or you might not be 100% truly confident in what you have to say. But again, this goes back to my other lesson with nervousness, it's okay to be nervous. But one thing that you should always be is prepared. You should know what you're about to say, you should know your content, you should know your research, you should know the numbers, whatever you have prepared, you should know that. So you can rely on that to help Build your confidence. So number two is literally just stand with confidence. Stand there. And one thing that I will suggest, how do you stand with confidence? Look into a mirror. Look into a mirror. You can even take a nice little just straightforward photo of yourself and send it to your friends. Like, hey, friends, do I look confident? Do I look like what can I do with my body language just based off how I stand? And if your friends, you know, your good friends who would keep it real with you, not the ones who just kind of, you know, butter you up or give you compliments all the time. You want a real friend who will give you real feedback and they'll be honest about whether or not you're actually standing with confidence. So practice in the mirror. Again, it's about the shoulders. It's about the back straight, straight in your body. Just exude the fact that you are prepared. In your mind, you might be scared. In your mind, you might be nervous, but that's not the point. With our body, your body is trying to communicate something differently than what's in your mind. So number two, stand with confidence. Okay, number three, the last delivery technique, which is simple and you can apply it right now. Number three, third technique is pausing. Now, what does pausing do? If you've been listening to my other lessons, you'll understand that pausing is a powerful technique to control the audience, control what they hear, control how they feel, make them linger, make them want more. The beautiful thing about pausing when it comes to grabbing your atten audience's attention is think about it. Let, let me paint you a story or let me give you an experience that I, I, I usually always do. So back when I was teaching in person, right, pre-pandemic, I would walk into the room. I would say hello. I would greet every, all my students. I would prep all my tech, make sure everything's on point. And then I would just stand in, to the side of a slide. And I wouldn't say anything. 
there were times where I just stood there and looked into the audience. Now, a few students would see me, and then others would be chatting, but I would just stand there. I would stand there, look at the audience, and I would pause and wait for their attention. And then eventually the room goes quiet and I have all eyes on me. And that's when I can literally know I have every single person's attention. All by pausing or not even saying anything. I did it all with my body language. I stood there. I waited for every single person's attention. And I, I didn't hold any grudge. I wasn't giving them a dirty look. I was just standing there waiting. So what does that showcase? That showcases that I have respect for you because I'm not telling you not to, you know, drop everything out. I'm just showing you like I'm waiting for you. I care about you. I want every single person in this room involved in what I have to say so we can create this community presentation, this experience for every single person to have. And this is one of the most powerful techniques that so many people do not apply. Literally, number three is one of the, the best tips if you ever run a workshop, if you are in an authority role. Is The great thing about being in an authority role is that you naturally have a lot more credibility than everyone else. Just because you know, you're in a higher position. But a lot of people don't know how to leverage that power or that authority to make sure everyone's on point or make sure that your presentations are that much more compelling and you know just more captivating is you can literally before you say a single word go on stage or go to the podium or go in your zoom conference whatever it is before you even give your presentation just pause don't say anything don't say anything wait until everyone's attention is on you. Now, if everyone's attention is on you, obviously you don't need to pause. But for cases where, you know, people are just kind of, you know, fiddling with their bag or on their phones, you know, just sending a quick text, you know, just wait for them. Because think about the audience member's perspective. They're probably sitting there, you know, on their phone thinking, oh, you know, a presentation is going to start. You know, l let me just send this quick text, right? That's a lot of people. L let me just finish this thing up real quick and then I'll jump back into the presentation. So they're like, da -da 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 -da, you know, just texting. But imagine the person who's texting, once they're finished texting, they look around. They're like, oh, shit. Oh, you know what? Let, let me put my phone away. Let me get ready because, you know, it's quiet. I think they're waiting for me. Think about how powerful that is. Think about that from the speaker's perspective, but also as the audience member's perspective. And it only takes a few seconds. Now, obviously, if the person who is texting just texts for an extended amount of time, maybe like 20, 15, 20 seconds, and they're the only person that is distracted, obviously, you're going to move on. You're only going to pause for a little bit because you're not going to have one person ruin the entire presentation's experience or ruin the rest of the audience member's um, experience. But that simple little pause makes people pay attention because there's nothing more powerful than, you know, just a loud sound, but also silence. Because imagine being in a room where everyone's talking, everyone's having fun, and then all of a sudden, it's quiet and you realize that you're the only person that's making any noise. What are people naturally going to do in that position? They're probably going to be quiet too. They're like, oh, why is everyone quiet? Maybe I should be quiet as well. Maybe there's something going on. And guess what? There is something going on. Your damn presentation. So you will pay attention. And I would do this a lot too. Even when I was a student and I was speaking to individuals at two, three times my age. And why do I do that? It's because my presentation I know is fucking good. And what you have to hear, what you're going to hear will be stellar. And I'm doing you the favor. I don't want you to miss out on what I have to say because you will miss out on something valuable. And that will be your loss. But I'm taking consideration of what you can gain from this. So those are three simple delivery techniques that you can implement 
probably 99% of the time. I do this all the time. And there are obviously some situations where you wouldn't implement this, but it it all it, it usually depends. But nine out nine out of ten times, always use these. It's always works. If you don't believe me, go look up all the other presentations and stuff like that. You'll notice these three thing techniques. And just a quick recap. Number one, project your voice. Now, when I say project your voice, again, I do not mean screaming. I just mean using your diaphragm, speak from your diaphragm so you have a booming voice. So it sounds almost like a megaphone. And your goal should be when you're giving a presentation, your volume, it should be loud enough so the furthest person in the room can hear you because you want to include everyone in the audience. Now, number two, stand with confidence. Again, this is a very simple technique. I mean, this is simple advice, but it's still so many people do not apply it. Stand straight, back straight, shoulders back, chest open, face the audience. Just look nice and polished. And last but not least, number three is just pause. Just wait before you start. Wait for the audience's attention. Because what you have to say is valuable, and you don't want the, any audience members to miss it. Right? It's kind of like you have great advice to give. You want to give it, but also the other person might not be willing to get it, but you still want to wait for them. You still want to give it because you know what you have to say is extremely, extremely valuable. Okay, so this video or this lesson went longer than expected, but nonetheless, I hope it was extremely valuable. Again, you can implement the uh, three, three tips right now for your next presentation. The only difficult part might be the first two, which is protecting your voice and uh, stand with confidence because maybe your body isn't really accustomed to that. You know, speaking from your diaphragm and standing with confidence, it, it can be a little bit shocking, but just practice in front of a mirror. You should be good. And pr projecting to your voice, just practice speaking in a room. Does it fill the room or does your voice fill the room? Okay, I'm getting thirsty. So that means it's the end of this lesson. Okay, so I hope this lesson is valuable. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you want a free copy of my public speaking book, email me. Okay, I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. This concludes our lesson for today. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at prof.brianhy at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day.